do that again. Meow. Have you ever stood in the middle of the road and looked at cars passing you by? You know what a car sounds like, but amazingly, when they pass you by, they sound nothing like a car. They make these weird sound changes. We all know that happens, right? And we know that so much that even as kids, we're taught to make those sounds when we describe a passing car. But did any one of you ever thought about why that happens? This is what we're gonna do today, with the help of my trusted duckies and fun in the shower. So, um, let me prepare my experiment and um, shoo, shoo. <laughs> So as my hair dries and my duckies await the experiment, let's go over a little bit what is sound. So the first conclusion we can get to is that I can't draw. So for your convenience, I added the tags. Here's the mouth and here's an ear. Now what actually happens when the mouth says something? How does the voice get to the ear? So as we speak, or for that matters, when my mouth drawing opens up and says something, it creates a wave in the air. That wave travels through the air and it has a certain frequency. Higher frequency will sound a lot higher and lower frequency will sound a lot lower. So now that we determined that I can't sing either, let's go on to see what happens to sound waves in action. So now that my ducky is clean, we can start working on how waves look like. So here's my ducky and here are the waves that he creates. And as you can see, the waves originate with the ducky and go all around him. He is the original point and they expand in the water all around, in circles. And if I do this very quickly, you see, then we have waves with very short wavelength, high frequency. But if I do this relatively slowly, then now we have long wavelength, very low frequency. Now, this is my ducky and this is the waves that you create. But what would happen if the ducky starts moving? So this is the wave, the way it looks when the duck is standing still. And I'm trying not to get reflection from my tub. It's very hard. But try to concentrate only on the waves that the duck creates. This is the waves that now that the duck is stationary. Now check out what happens when the duck starts moving. When the duck starts moving, the waves in front of the duck are short wavelength and the waves behind the duck are long wavelength. You see this? This happens because the duck chases after its own waves and therefore whatever's in front of the duck will be shorter. Whatever behind the duck will be longer. But what does it mean for sound? So let's take Mommy Ducky. Mommy Ducky will be right here and we'll listen to her little ducky that will speak in the form of our waves. So as long as the duck is stationary, Mommy Ducky hears him quite well in a very certain frequency, which is a pitch. But the minute the ducky starts moving, Mom Ducky is now at a point where, for her, the waves are higher pitched. Even though the ducky is making the same sound, he's vibrating, so, so to speak, in the same way, but since it's moving, then for the mommy ducky, now the sounds are higher. Now, let's say mommy ducky is now in the other direction. Now little ducky is going away from mommy ducky. So what will happen is when he goes away, whatever's behind him will be longer wavelength, as you can see here, and therefore lower frequency. And mommy ducky, which ran away, hello, here's mommy ducky, she will hear her own little ducky in a lower pitch. So the mother ducky will hear her little ducky in a very lower frequency, even though the ducky always has the same pitch. For this experiment, you're going to need a buzzer or any kind of anything that makes a sound. What I did was actually 
buy a buzzer, which is about a dollar fifty, um, and hook it up to two batteries. I'm gonna put a picture of this and how I created it. And you need a tennis ball, which you're gonna cut. See, a smiley tennis ball, uh, and stocking. So, what I did is, um, I activated my little buzzer, I don't know if you can hear it, but it's really annoying, and I shoved it inside the tennis ball, and the reason is that I'm going to fling it around and I don't want it to break apart, so the tennis ball is just to keep it safe. Uh, you can use whatever else you want and you think is appropriate. And the next step is the stocking, what we're going to do is, we're going to take the tennis ball as it beeps, it's really annoying. And we're gonna oh, put it inside the stocking like this. See? Alrighty. This is the sound of the little ball. What would happen if I fling it really fast next to you or, for that matter, the camera? Let's see. Here we go. So, admit it, crossing the road on a busy street will never be the same again. Neither will taking a bath or wearing this stocking. Rock,